In order to complete your neurohistology assignment, you'll first have to download a couple of things from the course Blackboard site. Uh, download the neurohistology practical instructions, which is a PDF uh, document, and save it to your local computer. And then download the neurohistology template that I told you about. And you can do this by right-clicking on the template link and choose Save Link As and save the link locally onto your computer. Once you've done that, you can double-click on the uh, neurohistology uh, template file and when you do so you should pop up a screen that looks um, something like this. On the first page of the screen there's a space for you to type your name and then please type your eight-digit ID number. You can also um, indicate here the date on which you completed your e-notebook and once you've done that you should then save a copy of the uh, file with some sort of a sensible name. A good idea would be to use your name followed by neurohistology. Next what you should do is navigate to the virtual microscope and in the example that I'm using here I'm going to show you the virtual microscope at the University of Iowa. All of the slides that you need to look at are contained within the nervous system section so follow this link to take you to the list of slides which you can see here. Some of the slides are numbered and some of these numbers are reflected in the list which I've given you which outlines the various things which I want you to see and document in the course of your neurohistology assignment. So for example I've indicated here that slides 23 and 24 are of cerebral cortex and here's a list of some structures that you might want to take some pictures of. If we return now to the virtual microscope and for the sake of this example let's take a look at the brain cerebellum slide by clicking on the radio button beside the name of the slide we open a separate window and this window will now contain uh, after it loads will contain an overview of the uh, cerebellum section be aware that the length of time that it takes for the slide to appear and also the length of time it will take for the image to come into focus after changing magnification is dependent on the speed of your internet link and also the time of day when the US is awake the site tends to be quite a bit. You can move the section around on the slide by picking it up and also you can uh, alter some of the characteristics of the slide up here. You can change the brightness and contrast essentially and you can also alter the magnification and the magnifications are preset with a maximum magnification of 20x. The magnifications indicated here are the magnification of the objective lens and not the true final um, magnification of the specimen which is about 10 times what the box here would indicate. If we move up in magnification to say 5x there's a small box appears here and this box allows you to see where on the overall specimen your current view is and by moving this box around you can navigate around the specimen. Let's look at this region here. On the list of things for you to see in the cerebellum or among the list of things for you to see in the cerebellum were Purkinje uh, neurons. They're found at the boundary between the molecular and the granular layer. So let's go to 20x magnification and once the image has developed we can move just to that boundary between molecular and granular layer and when we do so we'll see some very large neurons, so here's one here, which sit along this boundary and at a later point you'll study the structure of these neurons in some detail. So here's a very nice example of a Purkinje set um, axon extending uh, out here. Now having found the structure that you want to identify, the next thing that you want to do is take a picture of it. And to do that, we'll just take advantage of a very simple trick which you can do on any PC, and that's to use the print screen button. On a standard keyboard, you'll find the print screen key normally to the right of the uh, F12 key. You can see it here. On a laptop, the position of the print screen uh, key may be variable and you may have to press a function button prior to pressing the print screen uh, key. Uh, although you can't see me doing this now, I've just hit the print screen button and that has now taken a picture of the entirety of my screen. 
Having captured a snapshot of what you can see on the virtual microscope screen, it's now time to return to the PowerPoint file or template which you're going to use to complete the assignment. Once you uh, return, select the uh, second slide or subsequent slide. And now what you want to do is insert the picture. And you can do this either by um, hitting the Paste button or using the shortcut Control and V. I'll hit the Paste button. The image which gets pasted in is generally considerably larger than the slide onto which it's pasted. So you may have to navigate around until you find the corners of the image. It's particularly large on mine. And then if you uh, grab them so that the um, handle changes to arrows and begin reducing the image in size so that eventually it'll fit onto the slide. And now the next thing to do is to get rid of all of the surrounding material from the screenshot which you took to leave you with just the image uh, from the cerebellum. And the way to do that is to double click on the image and it'll pop up the um, image manipulation toolbar which you can see here, picture tools, select the crop tool, the handles change on the sides of the image and now as we draw these in it will eliminate those parts of the image so that I'm left with a picture which contains only what is the relevant microscopic information. When you're finished, uh, click outside of the image somewhere. Now we can pick the image up, drop it into the square that's been provided, and extend the size to make it look more manageable. And there we go. Here's our picture from the cerebellum. I have some boxes to fill out. First I want to type a name for this I'm going to call it cerebellum 1. The objective magnification was 20x and here I'll type a short description. This is the cerebellum. Uh, the source of the image, I need to indicate that for all of them and according to the rules which I've given you, University of Iowa will be sufficient to type in here. Now one thing you may want to do is to indicate specific items or regions within uh, the picture and you can do this by using the drawing tools which are available uh, to you when you have the uh, picture here um, selected. So for example um, if you wanted to add a text label and there's room for you to have six different labels here if you wanted to add a text label for Purkinje neurons I would take a text box and I would type the number one into the text box and you can change and manipulate the text as you see fit I'm going to make the text just a little bit bigger so I can see it. And now I'm going to put this text box right beside this Purkinje neuron here. And maybe change the color so we can actually see it. And now I'll put in the uh, legend label here. So the number one is a Purkinje neuron. label up to six items if you like on the image. If you wanted to mark a region on the image you could do that for example by dropping a shape like a rectangle and here we could say that there's a Purkinje neuron uh, in the box. You can play around with the tools yourself. It's fairly simple to do. When you want to add another image to your set of images you're going to have to add an additional slide. Click the new slide button and then go to the layout tab, drop the layout tab and make sure that the format of the slide is image insert. It's also a good idea to save your file as you go along so that you don't lose any work. In the event that the images that you're going to use in your neurohistology uh, assignment are images you captured using a means other than the print screen uh, method, perhaps uh, on your mobile device, then the procedure for inserting these images onto the slide is actually a little easier. Uh, click on the little picture icon in the box and that will take you to uh, a list of your folders. I'm in one of my folders here. And then select the image in the folder that you want to insert and click uh, Insert. You can then resize the image or manipulate the image in any particular way uh, that you see fit. When you've finished adding all the images you intend to add to your neurohistology assignment, then be sure one last time to make sure that you've uh, saved the file. You can submit the file either in PowerPoint format or a better format if you're able to do it is to submit it as an Adobe PDF. I don't know whether the um, campus computers for students um, have the Acrobat add-in contained within PowerPoint. If not, you'll have to look up how to do this. On mine, I simply click Acrobat and create PDF 
and then I save the file to an appropriate location. And when I do that, I now end up with a PDF file saved to my local computer, which contains within it all of the slides which I have uh, saved. Now I can submit my neurohistology assignment by returning to the Blackboard site. And within the Neuroanatomy Practicals uh, folder, you'll see here the Dropbox. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate to you how the Dropbox works because it works quite differently on staff uh, computers than it does on student computers. But essentially, all you need to do is open the Dropbox, select the file from the location into which you've last saved it, and then make sure that you upload the file, uh, not just contain the file within the Dropbox. If you have any additional questions, please email me at my email address, which you already have.